Welcome back to Session Zero, where I discuss world building and other RPG topics. Today I want to discuss how location cards from the Lord of the Rings LCG inspired me to create playable dungeon world locations and a new use for my Dungeon World Oracle deck. If you're interested, please stick around. Alright, thanks for sticking around. If you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe and share my channel with your friends. I've tried several times to build a system to use my Oracle deck for locations, but none of them really worked until recently when I started playing Lord of the Rings the card game. Briefly, and trying not to go too deep into rules and mechanics, sometimes in Lord of the Rings a location will pop up and add its threat to the current questing attempt. After questing, if there are no active locations in play, you may travel to one of these places, making it the active location. You do this at the cost of slowing your quest though, because you must explore it before progressing further along the current quest. These are the six locations that can appear in the very first adventure for Lord of the Rings called Passage Through Mirkwood. Six is an interesting number of locations, and I'll come back to that shortly. For now, let's make a land card for Mirkwood Forest. You can learn more about my land acronym in this video here. I'm going to change the name so as not to infringe on any copyright and call my forest Webwood. These cards give me the areas I'll include, but again, I'll change the names. I've got Worn Path, Dark Trail, Lazy Stream, Rocky Root, Webway, and Dread Pass. For natives, I looked at the encounter sets that make up Passage Through Mirkwood and found orcs, various spiders, including this big boy, which I'll call the Defiler, bats, and this crazy thing for which I'll reuse a monster designed for my Session Zero zine, issue number 10, Rika's Hunt. Details are just a few short sentence fragments, so I'll go with Dark and Lonely, The Air Feels Heavy, Cold, It's Unsettlingly Quiet, and Webs. Now let's take a look at one of these areas and make a land card for it. I'm going to use the Worn Path, which is based on this card from the game. I don't really need to make any areas for this location, so I'll skip that and go right to natives. Worn Path can inherit all of the natives of Webwood, but I also want to add Yorn the Great Werebear. This is an NPC that may show up, but only at this location or Dark Trail, so I'll add it to the land card for that location as well. Worn Path can also inherit any of the details from Webwood, but I'm also going to add some that are specific to Worn Path. Bare dirt, roots bulge up into the path, breaks in the canopy provide flashes of light and warmth. The keen-eyed among you may have noticed this one right here. I mentioned earlier that 6 was an interesting number of locations because I can use my Oracle deck to randomly select one of them and randomize the encounter face there. The setup rules for Act 1 of an upcoming adventure I'll be publishing tells you to reveal cards from the top of the Oracle deck until you reveal a d6 value of 1 or 2. For now, I just want to show off Worn Path, so I'm going to reveal cards until I get a number 1. Okay, let's look at Worn Path, which is the number 1 location. Note that location, layout, and design isn't finalized, so this may not be the final version seen in the adventure. Here's a description based on the details I jotted down on my land card, and some moves I think are appropriate. Now, these locations and adventures built using them are meant to be low prep with a bit of randomness and a lot of improv, and here's how that's accomplished. Using the card drawn for the location, follow the oracle card instructions to add extra flavor to the location and build an encounter that will occur at some point while the PCs are there. Every term in bold and italics refers to that aspect on the card. The location card we drew gave us the GM move, show a downside to class, race, or equipment. There are so many things you can do with this move. If there was a halfling in the party, I'd say the fallen branches and jutting roots slow them down because of their size. And if someone has a torch, I'd say it really attracts a lot of unwelcome attention. Next, ask this question and refer to the oracle. It's no, so I'll get Webwood Bats and this instinct. I specifically call out being creative when using the instinct because you'll get an entirely different bat encounter if you've drawn this card instead. The final bit of information drawn from the card will be used to create an NPC which may appear in Act 3. I like Jokot the Stubborn Bard. For completeness, let's say I drew this number one card instead. The GM move is different and the Oracle is yes, so I'll get to introduce Yorn who is an enormous friendly werebear. I can use this GM move to hint at his size from a distance, which may cause some caution from the players. If or when they do meet him, they'll find him examining an ancient, broken, debris-filled, webbed-up fountain. Does he know the fountain's history? Maybe. Draw another oracle card to find out. If he doesn't, perhaps Hawthorne the Just Noble does. Is that why Hawthorne entered Webwood? Seeking the fountain? There's a great world-building opportunity. I've discussed everything on this page except for this number 3 right here, which may not even make it into the final design. It represents the amount of progress the characters need to make to traverse the location in order to enter a new one, but I'm not 100% sure it's necessary. 
In RPGs in general, and Dungeon World in particular, I feel that narrative progress is more important than mechanical representation. However, I also feel like mechanical progress is needed if you're going to play the adventure solo. Maybe it'll only be used for solo play? I'm just not sure yet. So that's it. That's how a location card from Lord of the Rings LCG inspired a playable Dungeon World location and how I use my Oracle deck to randomize it. Again, please like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.